that that confronts this entire uh, kind of question, really, is how do you say that it cannot be proven at a time when there is such opacity? Nobody really knows what is where. All we hear are the figures. Do you think that in a democracy that is the best practice? Well, I think it is because I had explained everything in a paper, in a written paper, so people don't seem to understand. And uh, people rush into taking decision. And we don't use any consultant. You understand? Mm. We, they go the, the, the necessary processes. Yeah. So, can you take us through the process? So for instance, if you confiscate money, where, how do you, how is it kept? Do you take it to the CBN? You know, what, what no, precisely they, happens? Uh, they are, they are, uh, there are monies we send it to the recovery account in the CVN. There are monies that are being trapped, frozen in an account. There are monies we recover uh, for federal government institutions. We collaborate and uh, help them to recover. Uh, there are monies we recover for individuals and corporate organizations. So Such money, some of them will have to go through the process of litigations, through the process of prosecution. Then the, the court will, will come up with the, with the body. So the ESC doesn't the, the keep court. custody of any, of any funds, of any monies that it recovers by itself? No, we do at some point. Particularly those we recover in cash. It is kept in the, in the exhibit of, uh, room. And uh, at certain intervals, we make sure that this money are sent to our recovery account in the CVN. Before we go ahead, Malcolm. I was going to ask you. I mean, it's definitely one thing for us to, you know, be launching a very magnificent institution today. But then there are questions as to, you know, institutionalizing the fight against corruption. Uh, some people have said the manner in which we have gone about it in in the many years that the EFCC has been founded has not shown that we are trying to institutionalize the fight against corruption, it would seem that it has been at the whims, at the caprices of whoever it is that is at the helm of affairs, uh, sometimes the president, sometimes it could be the person who is heading the EFCC at a point in time. How do you respond to those who say that we have not quite institutionalized the fight against corruption? No, I, th I, I, I think the fact that we have been able to put this structure in place and it's ready for commissioning today, and it has gone through three administrations in the EFCC plus me. It started from Mr. Nuri Badu and uh, Mr. Vaziri Arida Waziri and uh, Mr. Ibrahim Lamode and as me, I'm trying to complete it. We have completed it. It shows we are, we are building an institution. Uh, the EFCC has gone beyond individuals. Are you, are you then, comparing And I assure you, I'm telling you we are doing our work without any manner of interference. M Mr. Mago, yes. are you comparing the building, the physical structure, yeah. with the actual fight against corruption? No, the physical some, structure some, some give create a better things. environment. The physical structure will create a better environment to, to it is better you stay in your own structure than uh, occupying rented quarters to run the office. How so the, the, the fact that, please, you need to go and see the 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 uh, the how, edifice. How does how does the structure, fact that you are working? Sorry, sorry is, to interrupt you, sir. But how does a building, for instance, decide who you prosecute? I mean, when you prosecute the person, how you prosecute the person, the manner in which you prosecute the person. I mean, uh, no, we, we just need to move forward. You you have a better working environment, and this helps to. Uh, I mean, you have had the accusation of, of the fight against corruption being tilted. I mean, the, of the, course, the, the, the opposition you, party. You always have such accusation. Always, I'm telling you, you always have such accusation. You're not worried about the, it? the issue of selectivity. Of course, we go after those people who have committed an, an offense. M Mr. Mago, you've mentioned here. I, I have not invited you, you know. Mm. Mr. Mr. Mago, yes. you've, you've, you've mentioned here that there has been no political interference in your view, in your operations. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, if that holds. What, what is your response to Nigerians who have raised uh, very serious concerns that you were investigating, actively investigating, the current executive secretary of the NHIS? And w during the course of that investigation, the president essentially issues a letter and reinstates him to office while he's being investigated. Does that not, not send a signal to your organization that leave this man alone? No. We are still investigating. I'm telling you, if we have sufficient evidence, we'll, we'll charge him. 
We, are, we have not stopped one inch, one minute. Investigation is still going on. There has never been a day where anybody call me and say stop investigation. It doesn't happen now. I'm telling you, I'm old enough in the, in the anti-corruption campaign in this country, and, and I know what is, I mean, what's going on. Let's quickly go to Lagos now. My colleagues there have questions for you. Oh, yes. Good morning, guys. Uh, Mr. Magu, yes, we know uh, that it, it is not easy fighting corruption, particularly in this country, because there are several you. challenges. But could you tell us, because, I mean, at the time, there were lots of Nigerians who were looking to see how several things will happen. Number one, they asked, what is the current situation with the investigation about the former SGF, the former DG of NIA? It's, it's, it's on. And very soon you... Oh, it's conclude, we'll conclude it. Okay. Um, could I'm also, telling you there is no sacred cow. Right. Okay. What about, uh, because when this one also happened, there were lots of people who were kind of surprised. They didn't understand what was going on. It had to do with Abdul Rashid Mena. What's going on with this case? The case is already in court. And uh, there are a pocket of uh, uh, intelligence arising from the, the recent happening, and then we, are, we, are, we are investigating. At the right time, we, we are still looking for him. He's still a declared, a, a, I mean, a wanted person. So, uh, Chamberlain, you know, this, this fight, the fight against corruption, is about Nigeria. I want Nigerians to take ownership, you and others, you and me. It should not be left to the anti-corruption agency to pursue this issue. You understand? We, I want to appeal to every Nigerian to take ownership of the fight against corruption. And this is the only way we can ensure victory. And I assure you that victory shall come. You know, uh, Mr. Magu, uh, when the president came into office, one of the mantra he wrote on was to destroy corruption, the absence of which corruption will destroy Nigeria. And just recently, he made that, uh, uh, he reflected back on that, talking about the delay in the release of the 2018 budget. Do you believe that the Senate, for instance, and there are elements, he says, that are responsible for this delay in the passage of the budget? And do you still have uh, some cases to settle with some members in the Senate? I, I think we should reserve this for another day. Which one of the questions? I, I perhaps Gimba should go through his questions again. Asking you, okay, let, let me take the second part of the question. Do you still have issues with some members of the Senate that are deemed to have uh, committed some level of financial fraud? No, no, it's, it's, uh, Gimba, it's not personal. It's not really personal. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say I have uh, issues to settle with some members of the Senate. I think that shouldn't have been the question. Now, just on Monday, uh, there was no <clears> news <throat> that uh, the EFCC failed to arraign Senator Jonah Jang and a cashier, Yusuf Gyang Pam. And the reason why they were not able to do it in just the Plateau State Capital was that the EFCC was citing logistics. Uh, and these people are in their custody. What sort of logistics no, would not, prevent not, the Not EFCC? really logistics, it's security issues. You know, we, we had a very serious concern when we went to, we were attacked twice when we went to arraign uh, uh, suspects in Jaws. Uh, and and uh, uh, our brand new powerful, I mean, Peugeot car was, was burnt. You know, I don't know whether you recall. I remember even the um, new river was attacked along Jaws Road. So I only say that uh, we need to make some uh, proper. Uh, procation and uh, security arrangement will go, but suddenly it will be arranged on, on Wednesday. You are not stalling because it's a current member of the Senate and you just don't No, want to... at all, at all, at all. At all. Uh, can I ask you, and um, maybe this might be, does the fact that you're acting chairman of the EFCC, does it hamper the work that you do? Does it in any way inhibit a full performance uh, of the work that uh, you do? I, I, I don't think so. In fact, uh, it's as a uh, I mean, um, uh, ginger me, you know, kind of uh, pushed me more forward than uh, ever before. Um, I think even when they, uh, if you are confirmed, you seem to be 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's better we go this way. I don't know how to the legislature. It commission. is better that you're acting, Chairman. Wouldn't you like to be substantive, Chairman? No, what, what, what difference is it? I mean, it's, it's better we pursue. The important thing is to the fight against corruption. Let this move. Let the fight go on. Mm. We, we, we know very recently uh, there was uh, some legislative amendment to separate the EFCC from uh, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit uh, as demanded by the Egmont Group. Can you give us a sense of w the implications of that separation on your operations as an agency? Has it affected you in any way? Okay, the, uh, the Egmont Group never said actually that uh, they should, we should have a, uh, an independent, and they never said uh, the NFIU should be separated from the EFC. It wasn't a precondition to avoid suspension. Yeah, that was not. That mm -hmm. wasn't the precondition. The precondition was that they should be financially autonomous, mm -hmm. they should have staff progression, and uh, they should be operationally autonomous. And, and this is exactly what we have done. You know, this year they, are on, they have a separate budget, they have a, a staff progressions, they, a, they are operationally autonomous. But they never said that they should be separated from the EFCC. The most effective financial intelligence unit all over the world are that one that domicile in law enforcement agencies. The most effective. I don't know whether you check. Mm. How did you react to the corruption index report um, you know, that, that came out and also reports from the uh, U.S. intelligence agency that corruption is still very rife in Nigeria? That's why you should join me. Everybody must join in the fight against corruption. You're not getting the support that you need? Are you, are you getting the support that you need from Nigerians? Look, the, the support, the most support, yeah, I mean, the, the best strategy in fighting corruption is to mobilize the people, I'm telling you. If you give me, me billions and billions of naira to, to run this office and, and uh, you don't have the support of Nigerians in the fight mm -hmm. against corruption, it becomes an, an issue. So that's why I'm saying Nigerians should take ownership. Mm. of the fight against corruption, so that there will be no hiding place for the corrupt. We have to chase them out of this country. What? We have to recover the loot. It's not personal. It's about this country. It's about the people of this country. They what, should. what precisely will mobilization involve? We'll talk about that in our closing moments with acting EFCC J. Ibrahim Magu. When we come back from this break, please stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We still have the acting chairman of the EFCC with us, Mr. Magu. The question, as we approach the 2019 elections, we do know that there's a peg as to how much can be spent for campaigns by the political parties and indeed those seeking political office. What's the EFCC doing to ensure that this is followed through? Because before now, it's not been followed through. Uh, well, we're ready. We are working with ANIC and uh, ensure that uh, such things doesn't happen. How are you working with INEC? Of course. We have an F a MOU with the INEC and uh, oh, misuse or purchase of uh, buying of port will also be addressed. I think we are still working on the modalities on that. I don't want to come out. I mean. Okay, Mr. Magu, uh, we, we know that in spite of what you've mentioned about the autonomy of the NFIU in terms of financial autonomy, that the national autonomy. Yes, right. That the, the National Assembly has been pretty adamant that the NFIU must be moved from the EFCC uh, into the C uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. Would, would such an effort, would such a move, uh, when that's completed, that amendment, will that affect the performance of what they do? I will continue to work. It will not affect the performance of the EFCC. So the, the, the key thing in the EFCC in the fight against corruption is determination to pursue the fight to the, the logical conclusion. Very quickly, social media is a gog right now because uh, there's a picture of President Muhammadu Buhari on your lapel and people are asking the question on social media as we speak about, you know, what does that say about, you know, kind of the neutrality of your organization, where your loyalties lie? What do you have to say about that? I'm hearing that one for the first time. Is that for his second term bid? No, I'm telling you, the, I, I'm hearing this one for the first time. I've not heard that. Are you supporting the president's second term bid? No, I'm not a politician. Please. Exactly. So why are you wearing a, t a tag of the president? But that has, uh, from the, I've been wearing it for a very long time. 
Okay. So just uh, wondering now, um, quickly, how do you intend mobilizing Nigerians uh, against this fight against, against corruption? Because, yes, people see corruption going on around them in many instances. And in, it's now a way of life. The policeman is still collecting his bribe every now and again. You know, what, do, what precisely do you want the people to do when you talk about mobilization? Um, uh, corruption is a crime against humanity. It's a disaster. I mean, it has bled this country that long, and uh, uh, it's not for me alone. That's why I'm saying every Nigerian should put in. You know, you have uh, you, Nigeria must take ownership of the fight because you cannot allow, you cannot leave it to the uh, to the anti-corruption agencies. So everybody has a. Uh, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing. You don't have to fight it the way I'm fighting. Everybody must find a way to fight corruption. I mean, even if you have to educate the children at home. You're not going to tell them what to do and what they should do in case I, they I mean, this. We, we must sensitize. We open. have to educate Nigerians that mm -hmm. corruption is wrong because some people don't even believe that corruption is wrong. So every Nigerian must be involved. I mean, even if you have to happen to educate children at home that corruption is wrong, you have done something. Are you defining the type of corruption that is wrong? I mean, when you talk about corrupt, people don't believe that corruption is wrong. Are you defining to them what corruption is? Well, it's wrongdoing. I mean, wrongdoings can be legal or illegal that are prescribed. But as long as one uh, realizes that corruption is a crime against humanity, is, is a, I mean, take it broadly that all wrongdoings are corruption. So educate everybody, sensitize everybody, wherever, even when you are involved in a... Then we have a lot of strategies in trying to, to sensitize, to educate people. And, and that is very, very important for you to get the support of every Nigerian uh, in the fight against corruption. Sensitization, educating Nigerians to know that, uh, that we have to, one of our main problems in this country is corruption. It's a disaster. Well, we have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. We say congratulations to you on your new edifice, which is going to be launched today. Uh, thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim Magu is the acting chair of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Uh, that will be all on Sunrise Daily today. Thank you so much for being an active part of it. I'm Mao Payogun Yusuf. Have a great day, everybody. I'm Ajuri Ingalale. Well, I'm sure Mr. Magu will also like to see Nigerians become active part in this fight against corruption. Hence, we'd like to invite him back to continue this mobilization on the part of the people. From Lagos, goodbye, everybody.